How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be talking about the Premier League because there's a real possibility that football could be returning in June. We're also going to be speaking about Arsenal uh, because they have been slammed for allowing their players um, back into London Colney to train. And the last piece of news is the Belgium League because they postponed um, their decision to cancel their own league um, because they may well get to finish it. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is the Premier League and it's the news that broke yesterday that football could be returning behind closed doors in June. As mad as that may sound, that is a distinct possibility and it is also being backed by the government. Uh, the Premier League will hold further talks this week as it targets a return behind closed doors in June and it has the backing of the government. All 20 clubs will hold the latest conference call on Friday armed with the knowledge that the country's political leaders are also keen for the season to resume when possible. Uh, the digital, cultural, uh, media and sports secretary Oliver Dowden said in the House of Commons I personally have been in talks with the Premier League with a view to getting football up and running as soon as possible in order to support the whole football community. But of course, any such move would have had to be consistent with public health guidance. The government's next review on current lockdown restrictions is due on May the 7th as detailed planning continues under Project Restart programme. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Monday, I ask you to contain your impatience. Uh, Johnson says the UK is making progress and beginning to turn the tide against the coronavirus pandemic, but urged people to maintain social distancing restrictions. Uh, sport will only resume when the government is satisfied its own measures are in place. The Premier League, along with other sports, will have to meet specific criteria before a return, including testing arrangements for participants uh, paid for by sporting authorities or clubs and ensuring measures are in place to avoid fans gathering outside matches. It has yet to be decided whether games will resume at approved stadiums or at a neutral venue such as St George's Park. Uh, the Premier League remains committed to completing the remaining 92 games of the season in line with UEFA's recommendations. Um, so yeah, look, as mad as that may sound, it's a distinct possibility and the fact that the government are involved and back in the idea, the only thing that could probably stop this would be a huge spike, you know, in the number of deaths, um, like a second wave. Um, but, you know, this country is not really anticipating that until maybe the end of June, start of July. Um, given the fact that there's so many people that have not listened to the restrictions and the guidelines and been going about you know, as though it's a normal day, going to the beach and sunbathing and whatnot. So, you know, some people are saying there is going to be a second spike, but when, we don't know. And there's a lot involved, but I was looking at some of the details with this um, and some of the neutral venues that they were talking about, of course, is England's training complex, St George's Park. Um, they were also talking about Manchester City's Academy Stadium. And they were also talking about Wembley, and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking behind closed doors, games at Wembley, St. George's Park. Come on, man. I know we're desperate for football to come back. I know we want to see the beautiful game again, but I just think it would do more harm than good. You know, watching these games of such magnitude, you know, such high stakes. Liverpool trying to, you know, get those couple of games they need to win the Premier League. European places up for grabs, um, relegation, you know, all of those um, issues that need to be sorted out. And you're going to be playing it in just subdued conditions. No fans, no atmosphere, nothing like a training game. Will it have the intensity? Will it have that kind of spark that's made the Premier League so successful? You know, we all know about the intensity of the Premier League, the speed, the pace, the power. But will playing behind closed doors lose that element to our game? Will it feel like a training game? Will the players be back up to speed? How long have they got to train and 
get themselves ready for a June return and whatnot. It's a strange one, man. And when you're looking at that, because you're thinking about players have to go back and start training properly. Well, they're not allowed to do that at the moment because of all the social distancing stuff. So what do you do? Do you stop them going out anywhere outside of football? Do you lock them in a hotel? So much. It seems far-fetched, but what I will say to this is that it's good that they're, you know, put something in place so that we all get an understanding of where we're going. They want to complete the season. We knew that they wanted to complete the season. And it's not a Liverpool thing. It's a money thing. They want to complete it because they want the money. It's as simple as that. Um, but yeah, maybe if we can get this done and dusted, then we can all just move on and just, you know, try and finally get rid of the coronavirus completely. And then we can start going back to games as fans because football without fans is nothing. It's as simple as that. Um, so a very interesting one. Um, next story. Um, involves Arsenal and this is an interesting one because yesterday uh, the news broke that um, Arsenal are allowing their players to return to London Colney uh, for specific training sessions. Now this ain't the case of Arsenal players all going to turn up and there's going to be contact or anything. Um, strict social distancing guidelines will be in place. It's certain players at certain times throughout the day and they get to use you know the facilities and I for one agree with that i think it's a good thing um, because it stops players going down to the local parks or anything else because they do need to get out there they do need to you know be outside of their home domain it's not all about you know doing the workouts in the gym i know that some of them are so lucky that they've got their own purpose-built gyms at home and big back gardens and everything else but they still need to train but the story that i'm going to get onto involves um, Georgia Bingham from TalkSport. Now, she's a presenter on there. And we know that most of the presenters on TalkSport have a habit of ripping into Arsenal. And for some strange reason, she's ripped into Arsenal because they're returning. Um, and the report goes on to say that Arsenal have been criticised for allowing players to return to the club's training ground uh, from this week. Members of the Gunner squad will return to light training sessions at their Hertfordshire base. There will be individual running in line with government's coronavirus regulations of being at least two metres away from people. However, TalkSport host Georgia Bingham is confused and upset as to why Arsenal have decided to take this step. She says there is no good enough reason why the players cannot train at home, seeing as though football is not set to return until June at the earliest. It made me really upset Arsenal going back to training next week. Um, that breaks social distancing rules. Social distancing rules say you can go out for food, health reasons and work, but only if you cannot work from home. Now, I'm going to put this one to bed very, very simple, OK? Because you don't play football at a Premier League level, Championship level, League One level, even a Sunday League level. Players cannot spend all their time trying to just work on their fitness in a gym. They need space. Not everybody has a humongous back garden the size of a football pitch with full-size goals in there. All right? The players need to get out into their own space, into a training environment where they can now start to work with the ball. Key there, work with the ball. It's not as simple as these guys running on treadmills, you know, what bikes and everything else. And then going out there when football resumes in June, and playing competitive football. It doesn't work like that. They need to do ball work. They need to, you know, keep themselves ticking over in that respect. Now, instead of them going down to the local park, where people will be there taking pictures and saying, oh, look, he's out, he's out, blah, blah, blah. Why not go to a safe, controlled environment, which is their work, you know, purpose, go there and prepare to get ready for when the season resumes. And they get to work with coaches at a distance who can help them, guide them and ultimately get themselves ready and up to speed for when the season, you know, goes again. So this nonsense about how you're really upset and, you know, the players are all going back and everything else and it's not going to be sticking to social distancing rules and whatnot. Behave yourself, man. They're going to be sticking to social distancing rules. Players have gone back already yesterday and they had overhead cameras. 
looking down and filming on the training pitches just to see that there weren't a big jolly up at the Arsenal training ground. No, the social distancing measures were all in place and the guidelines were followed. No problem with this. I've heard that Spurs are now doing it with their players and I'm no doubt a lot more of the clubs will start to do it as well. Why put the risk of your players going out there in the local parks and whatnot, trying to do ball work or working in small spaces in a garden where most of these Premier League clubs have humongous training grounds with so many pitches. Arsenal have got over 12 pitches at their training ground that are just sat there. Players can go on them, good environment, work with the ball, shooting, dribbling, you know, all kinds of stuff that they can do with their self that they cannot do at home. Very simple. I won't say no more on that matter. Um, last piece of news involves the Belgium League and uh, Belgium clubs have postponed a vote on confirming the cancellation of the season until next week, keeping open the door for a possible resumption. Following the decision taken at the beginning of April, the 24 Pro League clubs have been scheduled to confirm the premature ending of the season due to the coronavirus, with Club Bruges declared champions. Um, now, this is a very interesting one because obviously... They already cancelled their season. You know, Bruges were champions. But they've now postponed it. And they're going to wait a week or so. So maybe they're looking at the situation in Germany. Maybe they're looking at the situation in Italy. Because players are supposedly going back to train. Um, as little as next month in May in Italy. Um, and with what's going on in the Premier League. Maybe now they've looked at that and said, hold on a minute. We may well be able to get this season done after all. So let's not, you know, jump the gun a bit. Let's just have a little look. And if they get back in from their government and everything else, it's something that they will be able to do. So very interesting news. And um, I'll keep an eye on that one over the next week or so and see what actually happens. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. Um, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. I'll see you a lot tomorrow. I'm out of here.